Let's go to New Jersey next and talk to Michelle. Hey, Michelle, thanks for the call. You are live. Michelle. Come in, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Michelle, what's this going on? I am. I have, I have uh, cancer. I'm sorry to hear that, Michelle. And um, it's been 14 years. Um, for me, it was just being diagnosed the first time in 2000, and I was cancer-free for like eight years, and then it came back. So and was it was it the same type? Was it the same type of cancer both times? Well, it metastasized. And yeah, okay. All right. So where did you have it first? I had it first in my left breast. All right. Did they do a radical mastectomy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did they take the right breast as well? Um, in 2008 they did, but not in 2000. Yeah, okay. So 2000 they just took the left one, and then in 2008 it came back. Did it come back to the right breast? Right, but just my lymph nodes. It wasn't in the breast. It was uh, lymph Just nodes. in the lymph nodes. Okay. And is that where it is now, or has it gone to your liver? It's gone to a little bit in my liver and my back and my breast. It, it, it just moves. Yeah. And every time they think they have it, I go to yeah. regular doctors, yeah. it just comes back somewhere else. Well, right, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the of the whole radio show today in the first hour. The, the tumor, right, the presence of the cancerous tissue is not the disease. It's the result of the disease. There's a process, a metabolic process going on in your body, which makes cancerous tissue become generated. Just removing the cancerous tissue does nothing to eliminate the process that caused the cancerous tissue to form in the first place. And this is why cancer treatment is so insane here. And it's not just the U.S., right. it's all around the world from the pharmaceutical industry because their treatments do not get to the cause of the disease. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, glad you got, I'm glad you got an extra eight years, right? Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, the therapeutic is a little bit juvenile. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we know, you know, and I'm going to tell you what I would do if I were you, and I'm glad that you've called because there is a little bit of hope here. But, you know, if there was an epidemic of carpal tunnel syndrome in the United States, well, one cure for that would be to cut off the hand, right? I mean, cut the hand off, no more carpal tunnel syndrome. Well, that's one solution, but it's kind of a archaic, barbaric solution. And that's what breast cancer treatment is like here. It's archaic and it's barbaric. Stick around. I'm glad that you called. We'll be back after these messages. We're talking to Michelle from New Jersey who's been saddled with a cancer uh, condition for a number of years now. So, Michelle, how'd you hear about me anyway? Um, my brother-in-law um, um, heard, heard about you, and he called, contacted me. Okay, so a couple things we need to be clear of and we need to understand here. Um, it's illegal uh, for anybody, uh, and well, in New Jersey, you can't, the only people who can treat cancer in New Jersey are MDs. <laughs> I mean, the only people who can treat cancer are the people who stink at treating cancer. It's the MDs. The pharmaceutical industry uh, sponsored laws years ago to make it illegal to treat cancer unless you had an MD after your name, and that's why... It's a runaway train of calamity, and that's why all the alternative cancer treatment centers are not in the United States, because you can't treat cancer here unless you're an MD. Now, some states which license and regulate my profession, naturopathic medicine, there are some things that you can do with cancer patients. There are some things that you can do, but we're restricted even there. Um, so we can't treat cancer, and quite frankly, in the context of this radio show, we don't treat anything. But what we do do, but what we do do, is recommend uh, boilerplate foundation medical nutrition strategies, the intention of which are to support your body's ability to optimize its structure and function. Now, the selenium supplementation. Selenium is a trace mineral. Selenium is a mineral like uh, 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 calcium, right? It's a mineral. It's found in the soil. It's found in the earth. God makes it. 
uh, selenium supplementation has been proven to reduce the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%. 82%. Mm-hmm. It reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%. So it would be prudent in order to support your body's ability to fight cancer, uh, the, to fight the occurrence of any new cancers, to get on board with the selenium supplementation. The selenium supplementation increases your it's a, it's an immune system support, and okay. it's a fantastic cancer preventive. It's a fantastic cancer preventive. Um, okay. it's, it's entirely possible that had you been taking selenium your entire life, you never would have gotten breast cancer because it reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82%, which is remarkable. And, you know, inquiring minds want to know, why don't you know this? And why doesn't the Susan G. Komen Foundation know this? And, by the way, uh, my colleague, Dr. Wallach, who founded Longevity, uh, sued the United States Food and Drug Administration uh, to secure something called a qualified health claim, which allows us to say in the public forum, because there's mountains of research to back us up, that selenium supplementation reduces breast cancer by 82%. So we sued, well, not we, but Dr. Wallach sued the Food and Drug Administration so that we can say this. And that was years ago. It was like 17, 18 years ago. And so it's not like there's not enough research to support this, and it's obscure. And, you know, it was done by one doctor in, in, in Auschwitz somewhere. This is a big deal. And if your doctor doesn't know this, then that's a problem, and it speaks to the fundamental problem that we have here.